Good afternoon, my name's Braden Rent for Second Life, and this tutorial will be covering uh, applying a texture to a mesh, exporting that texture, uh, going into Photoshop, and then re importing it into Blender. Okay, right. So the question, this particular question was raised in the Blender Mesh Development Group in Second Life. Uh, it was also uh, asked on the YouTube channel about exporting textures. So as you can see from my screen, I'm currently working on a kind of centurion, Roman centurion outfit uh, for the role play, uh, role play environment that I create for mainly uh, and I've done most of the texture work at least on, on a rudimentary level and I'm just going to be doing the text some of the texture work on the tunic so as you can see at the moment it's white and the reason it's white uh, is because I, all I've done is I've just baked a texture uh, well I've just baked no texture really so it, it comes out white but it does have the ambient occlusion uh, which you would probably know as a shadow map. You can see in the UV window on the right of my screen uh, of where the light has been occluded from the bake, uh, especially on, on where the, uh, the chest plate, the back straps and the leather straps off the skirt uh, go. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is I've selected the tunic and I'm going to make sure there's a material. Uh, I've showed you in the last tutorial on the sofa on how to apply a material to an item. But just so you can remember, you just highlight everything. You select the plus button and then select new and assign that material. So this already has a material. So I can actually go into the texture window. Now at the moment, I've... Uh, I used to have a texture there, I've removed it for the purposes of this tutorial. So we've got the texture, and at the moment there's nothing there. So I'm going to open, and I'm going to choose a texture that I think would be applicable. It's one that I got off the internet. Uh, I did change it a little bit, but it is a red woven fabric. So I can open that, and as we can see, there's the red woven fabric. For this instance, I've increased the size to 6 on the X plane which is left to right and six on the Y plane which is up and down so that's really kind of a repeat uh, so it's repeated six times that'll give it a nice tight knit uh, because obviously uh, sizing is important when you're doing your texturing as well you do lose some resolution as you try and compress it down but as SL really only applies a 1024 texture I wouldn't worry too much about it uh, so we're going to get that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn that, for example, just as a full render. Uh, I'll pause the video while it renders out. Okay, so we've baked that out, and as you can see, uh, we've got shading on the texture that we've applied. Uh, and the reason we've got shading is because we have a lighting setup. In this instance, it's really just a three-point light, which is left and right. And normally you put one behind. I've put in a little filler light above and at the front just to give it a little bit extra. But you should never really base it just on a singular light. Uh, there's lots of lighting tutorials on things like Blender Cookie and Blender Guru and, and even YouTube. Uh, so we won't really be going into lighting. Uh, but generally uh, you have a, a main light source and fills. Uh, in this instance, my late my main light source is the right lamp, and the rest are really just fills, uh, which you 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 uh, bring down your intensity of the light. Uh, for example, here the left is the energy is 100, on the right the energy is sorry the left is 700, and the right is one 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 thousand or or point seven or or one. Right, so. We'll go back to our uh, our tunic, and now what I would like to do is I'd like to export this texture uh, so I can use it in Photoshop. Uh, what we shouldn't do is we shouldn't export a texture with any shading on it because when we 
then re-import it and we go to rebake it again we will have twice the amount of shading which will significantly darken your uh, your texture so i'm going to change it from full render over to textures now the textures will bake without any lighting without any normal mapping bump mapping specular mapping any of that it will just be the base texture that's applied to the uv map that you created previously so we'll bake that out and this should only take a few seconds so i'm going to pause it anyway while we get that to work okay right so we've uh We've now baked our texture to the UV. So as you can see, everything's as it should be. Uh, we've got the front, the back, the arms, uh, and this round circular bit there is just the underside of the skirt, uh, mainly because we don't want you to see all the way up and any alphaed out legs, etc. So I've, I've put that in just to, uh, to cover that. So what we're going to do is we've got that texture so we can now image and we can save as image and I'm going to apply call that and put it in my base textures and I will call it the tunic. Uh, when we save we can either save as black and white, RGB or RGBA. RGBA includes any alpha in the image and uh, the way that it normally comes out is that the black areas of your image uh, will be transparent. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because mostly you get edge bleed around a UV, so uh, you could end up where uh, you have two parts that meet and it will have a slight transparent edge. So I always try and use RGB rather than RGBA. So I'm gonna to save to RGB, uh, which will be a PNG file, so we can save as image. Okay, so we'll now we'll go into Photoshop and we'll import that image. Okay, we've opened up Photoshop, so we'll go up to File, and we're going to uh, we're going to open, and we'll open up the base tunic image that we've created, and and there it is. Right, so uh, if you want to do anything within Photoshop, you can do it from there. Uh, what you can also do, uh, if you're unsure as to what things are and where they are, you can also go back into Blender uh, and you can highlight your UVs and you can go UV, export UV layout. Uh, I've already done it previously, so we'll export it again. Like so. We'll then go back into Photoshop and we can actually file, open, and we can go to our UVs and we can open up the tunic and we can actually overlay that over the top uh, and I'll, I'll put it there so that can give us sometimes a rough idea of what goes where uh, if we're a bit confused as to uh, which parts of our outfit or item apply to certain areas uh, but I'll turn that off for now. What I want to do uh, for my outfit is I created a normal map in ZBrush. Uh, obviously you may not have ZBrush. You can create them in Blender as well uh, using the Sculpt tools and multi-res on your outfit. We will be covering things like multi-res at a later date. So I use ZBrush for this, but it's really, it's no different. Uh, what a normal map is, uh, is if I go to my outfit and I change it from multi-texture to GLSL mode, uh, it will apply any lighting live rather than as a bake. So if I go up and I apply my normal map, as you can see, we then have all of the uh, the folds etc that I created within ZBrush uh, live on the outfit. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, I don't feel that it's it applies a very defined edge. So I'm going to just bolster that within Photoshop by using my normal map as an occlusion map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into uh, into Photoshop. I will then open up. Uh, my normal map which you can see here is it, it's kind of like a, a, a blue image and the reason it's blue is because blue is the kind of neutral color uh, and then it applies red and green 
for the direction of the light. So you will tend to see uh, varying shades of blue uh, with blue uh, additional red or additional green etc how that actually applies is it tells the texture where the light is coming from uh, in uh, 3d gaming it's used to create uh, the impression of uh, detail that applies to light on very low poly uh, low poly uh, models so it's quite a useful thing to have Second Life at this present moment does not support normal mapping. Uh, there are plans in development to have a material system for things like specular maps and normal maps within SL. Uh, I think Cloud Party does have them currently, but uh, we're not making for Cloud Party. But the, the basics of what we're teaching here does apply to almost all game modelling. So... So it, it, it can apply really to anything. So it's really quite useful to get these uh, techniques well, uh, well established uh, from the offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this map to create an occlusion map. So first of all, uh, sorry, not occlusion, overlay map. So I'll change the image to a black and white, like so. I'm going to reduce it in size just so it fits in with my current texture so I'll reduce that to 1024 and I can then apply that over as an overlay I'll just line those up I've got snap to grid selected so that it should fit reasonably well now uh, with overlays the level of grey should always be 50 50 uh, so that it's neutral at this present moment it's not so the grey will lighten the outfit so I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna go to my adjustments brightness and contrast and I'm gonna lower it a little bit uh, and as you can see uh, in fact that's probably darkened it a little bit too much so I'm gonna go in and uh, raise the brightness just a tad uh, okay and that should be about it now yeah Right, so we've now created that texture. Uh, we've created it by using a diffuse texture, uh, the diffuse map, which is the colour. And we're, in this instance, I'm using the normal map to add the texture wrinkles uh, just to, to bolster the normal mapping, uh, as you can see from the texture there. So I'm going to save this out. It's very, very important that you don't save it as the same name that you exported it as in Blender. The reason this being is it will create a, a paradox for the texture in stack where it's trying to uh, apply its own texture that it exported so it, it just will end up with a black screen and you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to break that out until you change it a different name. So what we're going to do is we'll save this out and I'm going to save it uh, again, as a PNG, mainly because PNG is a lossless uh, situation. Uh, if it is a, a Targa, Targa has a certain amount of degradation in the format, uh, as does JPEG. Uh, PNG is lossless, and I believe TIFF is also lossless. So PNG is a good thing to use. Uh, so I'm going to call it Diffuse. So we'll save that out. Uh, I do want to replace it. I, I have done this tutorial once already, but uh, it unfortunately crashed out, so I'm doing it again. So we'll replace that out, and we'll OK that. We'll then go back into Blender, and where at the moment we've got this red texture that we used, what I'm going to do is I'll remove that. Well, I could actually just apply the texture again, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll remove the texture that's there. Uh, I'll up the brightness back to 1.0 and the saturation back to one and I'll open the uh, the tech uh, sorry the uh, diffuse texture that I've just generated like that and I'm going to go down and I'm going to make sure that I change the size back to one as well okay so as you can see in the GLSL mode we can already see the texture and how it's applied uh, I'm going to come out of GLSL and go into multi-texture and I'm going to render this out 
not as a texture but as a full render so I'll start the bake on that and I'll come back to you once it's baked. Okay, now as you can see, I've now baked the te texture out. Uh, we've done it as a full render, so we also have any shading that may apply. Uh, and it's also applied the uh, texture diffuse layer that we created briefly in Photoshop. Uh, this can now uh, cope with any alterations that you do in Photoshop. So, for example, if you wanted to, uh, if we, uh, let's change that to, uh, let's just change that to there, right? If, for example, we we put a mark on the arm, uh, probably doing it on a on another layer would be a better idea. If we put a mark on the arm, like so, and we then file and we save that. back as a uh, diffuse and we go in back into blender uh, we won't see any major change on a multi texture but if we go into GLSL mode and we go back to our texture and we reload the texture we can see that black mark that we've just drew on the arm to be a, a live uh, view of it and we can then bake that back out if we wanted to. Uh, I don't personally want to because obviously it, it has no place on my particular doc, uh, particular uh, top. But uh, that is the basis of creating your textures. So anything you know you could put on maybe your dirt layers, uh, any specularity, etc., uh, would apply. Uh, at the moment it seems to not be updating uh, but I can actually reload the image and go back into a multi texture and rebake that and that'll quite happily bake uh, just make sure the item is selected there we go let that bake uh, right and what we will be doing at a later date is we'll be going more into how to create clothing uh, what we won't be doing is we won't be covering how to import your avatar out of Second Life. Uh, the reason being is because there's a couple of techniques that can be done uh, on how to do that. One of them is using the XML file, which you can use on things like uh, Gaia Care's Avastar software uh, plugin for, for Blender. Or you can use your OBJ files, which you can obtain by using the uh, an old Phoenix release, uh, which is under your advanced meshes and morphs, uh, which is the method that I use. Uh, there's there's different ways of doing it. Uh, certainly, what you will need to obtain is things like the Domino McNamara's uh, Avatar Blend file. Or alternatively, use Gaia Carey's Avatar Workbench. Uh, both of those uh, increase the bone. Sorry, use the bones, etc. That you that you would use. Uh, so, if you really want to know how to uh, how to import and export your avatars, uh, I would suggest going to uh, Asher's videos. I'll put a link in the. Okay, sorry about that uh, phone call. Obviously, not the most appropriate time, but needless to say, uh, you can go to Asher's videos, and he'll tell you how to export your vid uh, your avatars out of Second Life uh, quite quite extensively, really. Uh, and that should be it for today. If you have any questions or queries, then please don't hesitate to either le leave a message on the YouTube channel or alternatively uh, on the Snatched blog or of course on Second Life. So feel free, I can say my name is Braden Rent and uh, I'll talk to you again and see you again next time. Enjoy the rest of your day, goodbye.